across the board so many young players um, is not an ideal. But like I keep going back to the point, I think we've got some incredibly, incredibly good footballers at this football club. I, th I think that I think there are lots of positives. I do think there are lots of positives at the moment. It doesn't feel like that, and I'm not going to sit here and start spinning them because the reality is, the biggest positive will be winning a game of football, regardless of talking about Chris Wigg and football. I think when we win a game of football, that's the biggest positive than than, than all the other things. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, comes on for the guys, Phil. Um, judging just by who you've got available. <laughs> So there we have it. There's a little bit of interview from yesterday from Michael Dodds. I just wanted to show you why do we have such an unprofessional stream when we do interviews these days? Why do we cut it and end it and start it the way we do? It just seems really unprofessional. But anyway, that's by and by. But here we go back again with another match day review. And unfortunately, as you can well see, I haven't been well enough to go to the match today. Not, not feeling great at all. Head is really bad, but I thought I'll watch the game in the house and do a match day. Like, uh, I mean, I just watched the game in the house, I didn't do a live stream whatsoever, did I? Nothing, I just watched the game in the house and it was quite a boring nil nil draw. Anyway, I've got a quick score prediction for Wincy and Ria Mondo. Afternoon, Terry. Um, I think the score is going to be Sullen 2, QPR 1. But I don't know if I'm going to get beaten or not. Put me on with it. I'm going to go back on the night. Hiya, Johnny. I'm going to go once a piece and hope for the best. I've got no feeling that we're going to win. Three points and three pints as usual. Three points, three pints. <laughs> one way. Three points, three. One point, one pint. That's exactly aye. I've had two, two pints. Can I get two points, can you? <laughs> So team news, Patterson was in goal, we had a back four of Hume, Ballard, Yelda and Styles, and we had Neil Job, Adil, Barr, Mundell and Amir. And to be honest, the first half, the whole game, it's finished nil-nil, the whole game was pretty poor to be fair, was let's face it. It seemed like two really poor sides, two sides that are kind of way off the mark at the moment, aren't they? I mean, to be honest, a whole reflection of the game, We'll go into that in a minute. I just started now. I'm coming again here. I think QBR started the best of the two teams, didn't they, really, to be fair? They started the best two teams. The first 10 minutes, QBR kind of dominated a little bit, but I think Sun will come into the into the own later on in the game. I think we'll go through we'll go through players. I think we'll go through Bar Bar for me. He tries to keep hold of the ball too long, but when he gets the final trying to get the final sort of touch to get the ball in the box, he gets either he gets challenged. Or he gives the ball away or makes the wrong decision. So, to be honest, I think Barr is probably one of the poorest players in the side today. And I think Hamil was also a poor player as well for Sunderland. Look on the positive side of things. Let's look on the positive side of things. Because I feel this match review is absolutely sort of got no sort of shape, form or formation. A bit like Sunderland. To be fair, let's not, let's not be too harsh on the lads. A nil-nil draw. We get a point. We stop the rot. We haven't lost another game of football. But let's face it, QBR were poor, they were poor. Um, first half, overall, let's face it, Jack Colback's not very good these days. Is he, he is really is a <laughs> really is a, a poor player at the moment, Jack Colback. And in, in a really, you know, like I say, QBR, I wish them all the best in the future. But apart from the last 15 minutes, I thought overall, they didn't really offer that much. One or two shots they had in the first half. Went wide. But... You know, um, Job, let's pick out something positive again. Job, in the penalty box, inside his own penalty box, and managed to clear the ball away rather than in his own box to give away a chance for a QBR. He got the ball away. He, he, you know, he's learned from his mistake last week, and this time he headed the ball away, which was really good. So well done, Job. I'm really I'm pick, picking the straws at the moment. Picking the straws, I don't even know where picking the straws. I don't even know anything. You know, bars far too. We we far too slow going forward in the first half. We seem to want. Uh, let's let's talk about what we got. Left hand side, we got bar on the left hand side, and Hamia up front, and the pair of them when they get the opportunities, 
the kind of dilly dally on the ball. By the you know we, we had one or two opportunities in the first half where Hermia could have really drove at the penalty box when he sort of he got the ball loose, sort of midway inside QB's, QBR's half. But he's kind of like he doesn't have much confidence to be fair. He sort of dilly dallied on the ball, and by the time he he sort of decides what to do, the defense is back for QBR. And I feel Bar's the same. A chance in the second, the first half, Bar again, middle of the QBR, in between QBR and the halfway line, he has a chance to really drive with the ball. We had like sort of three v v three, and it it just seems to like just hold himself up, hold the play up. And and it's just no sort of assertiveness, no like I say, a direct drive with the ball. And and by the time he makes his mind up, the QPR defenders are getting back. So yeah, the first half, it's the first half overall was just a poor, a really poor game of football. It was it was it was a hard watch to be honest, a real hard watch. Second half, I got notes, but. I didn't even know whether anything makes any sense, to be honest. Second half, should a job have won a penalty in the first two or three minutes? Second half, he was back to go. Ball comes down towards him. Bloch had his arms around Job and he went down. A bit soft, maybe it's a bit soft from Job. Didn't We didn't really sort of start to take shape and start to really take control of the game until we made the double substitution, which I thought was positive from, positive from, from Dodds. He brought off Bar, brought off Amir, which were clearly the worst players on the pitch. Let's face it. Let's make no bones about it. I can't see any kind of future for Bar or Hermia at Sunderland in the championship next season. I hope I'm wrong. I'm, I know I'm not gonna beat around the bush. I'm not gonna beat. I'm not gonna muck about beat around the bush. I'm gonna tell you the way it is. For me, Bar and Samido, get rid of them. You know, in the summer window, let Hermia go. Get rid of them. Bar again. Get rid. And let's bring in some better quality players because them too, let's face it, they're not good enough for the championship. I just it's my opinion. I wish them I wish them both all the best in the future. I wish them both all the best going away somewhere else. But let's just get rid of them too in the summer window. Along with Dak. Let's just get rid of Dak as well. Cause let's face it, what what has he brought to the team this 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 campaign? Absolutely nothing. <coughs> He's brought absolutely nothing. Ah, uh, Bar, Dak, get rid of the three of them in the summer. But Rick came on, positive young lad. Ekwa came on, looked decent. Them came on, we had a bit of a threat going forward. I like Rig and Hume on the right-hand side. They link up really well. Again, we got nothing. We got, once you take off, when do you take off Hamia? And, you know... He's there as he's there as he's there as a striker. Let's face it, he's there as a striker. He's supposed to be the focal point. He's supposed to be the person who scores the goals. We we're probably better off with just all midfielders with, with him on the pitch. But when he came off, maybe should we have brought Exactly, we've got no Miendo and we've got no Rushim, so we couldn't bring on the striker and there's burst or so. It, it it is power. Whereas when you, when you look at the whole big picture of things, the overall scale of of the season, it's been an all round disappointing season, hasn't it? Let's face it. You look at the squad. The squad isn't good enough. We know it's not. You know it's not good. Enough. You know even the even the most hardened Speakman and KLD fan out there cannot say that squad of players are good enough. Even with we had no. Even if the injuries, we, we had all of our players back up top. There's nothing, is it? Let's face it. But anyway, Dan Neil had a better game in midfield. He had a chance in the first half. We went for goal from the halfway line. Good opportunity. You know, Rooney, Rooney esque, um, Beckham esque one, but oh, the keeper got back and it just went over the top as well. They hit the crossbar in the first, in the second half. A cross comes over. They hit the crossbar, and it wasn't really until the last fifteen minutes, or even though sorry, the last, what is it? Last five minutes, they brought this Armstrong on QPR. And for me, he was your best player on the pitch. Down the right-hand side, driving a tired Sunderland legs. He got down there three times in five minutes. And three times they could have scored a goal. The first time, he took the shot himself. He seems a bit raw himself. He wants to drive towards the goal. And he cuts in and the angle's tight. And Patterson's down there to make the save. The second time, he learns from his mistake. 
exactly the same again. He gets past tired defenders, whether that's Yelda down that side or whatever it was, but he just, he went past them. He's like slicing a knife, hot knife through butter in the box again. This time he pulls it back and it should have been 1 0. Let's face it, it should, you know, it should have been 1 0 to QBR. QBR should have scored then. Basically, the goal at his mercy, he hits it down. If Patterson had stayed up, it would have been a goal. But Patterson, fair due, gets down, good strong hand, saves it, saves it, saves it, saves it. You know, saves saves a point, simple as. That should have been three points to QBR there and then. That should have been game over there and then. That should have been, you know, another defeat. But for Patterson, he gets his critics. He gets, he does, you know, he, he does have his moments where his, his distribution's power. But he is a good shot stopper. And, and that was a superb save from Patterson. And again... Exactly the same again. Armstrong way inside Sunderland's, inside QPR's half. He gets past half of Sunderland's team, drives to the penalty box and tries to cut the ball back, but I think it's blocked, I'm not sure. But, you know, three fantastic opportunities for QPR's Armstrong. And to be fair, they should have scored. Um, another thing that's a bugbearer, there's no way in a million miles, there's no way in a million years there was 41,000 fans out of there. That's a piss take. You can't... Like, I was purely to go at the match today. I know there's other people out there who didn't go at the match today. You can't, just because I bought a season card, you can't say that. Or just because, you know, there's, there's 30 odd thousand season card holders out there that they're guaranteed bodies through the door. That is wrong. False, you know, advertisement, whatever it is, it's bollocks. Count the people going through the doors like you should be in the first place and let's have a real figure of players, of fans on, on in the touchline. Fans, it, it, you know, in the stands. Because it's it's absolute bollocks. There's no way, there's nobody out there can come on here and tell me there was 41,000 fans in that ground today. Man of the match. Mundell. Again, another player. He's raw. He drives down the right. Hold onto the ball too long. It could be better play next season. Dan Neal had a good game. I'll give it to Patterson. Patterson saves the day. Simple as. If it wasn't for Patterson, we'd have lost that game of football the day. Simple as. So well done, Anthony Patterson. You get my man of the match. But like I said, two poor sides. You know, really, really poor sides. Season's over for Sunderland. We're nine points. We're not going to go down. We're not. Simple as. You know, we battle, battle draws at home, whatever that. You know, we, it's a good clean sheet. It's, it's good for the defence. It's good for the confidence of the defence. Good for Patterson. Good clean seed. That's the positives. The negatives, two poor sides. And we're going to be nowhere near the top six next season unless we actually invest in some players, invest in a quality head coach and invest in some good man, a good manager and good players and experienced players. Otherwise, we're going to be nowhere near, absolutely nowhere near the top half of the championship next season. Get rid of some of these youngsters that are not good enough. You know, we've given them an opportunity. Sometimes, sometimes you know, it's okay because he's a Sunderland player thinking that, you know, let's give them two or three seasons. The youngsters might do well in the future. Here and now, we need to make decisions. Which players this season look like they've got a future at Sunderland? Which players this season look like there's some growth in them for next season? And which players do you think just... Are just nothing. There's just nothing there, as in the championship standard. I think Bar and Amir are nowhere near championship standard. That's just my opinion. I'd let them go. Dak, go. There's many other players out there you probably feel the same about. Players for the future that look at Mundell looks like he's got something about him that could be decent, if not next season, the season after. That could be too late, like like I know, like I say, Chris Rigg definitely got something about Chris Rigg. We need to make sure we tie him down to contract. Don't let him go off to Newcastle. Don't let him go off to Manchester United or Liverpool or wherever it is. Tie Chris Rigg down to contract. Let's get the lad. Get him in the plans to start games of football next season. Give him something to really think about. If he's going to go to somewhere, for example, like Newcastle and sit on the bench for a season, you know, have a sit down with him. Tell him that there's a position there for you to start games of football next season. Get a good season in the championship behind you. Build your career. We need to tie players like Chris Rigg down. The team itself today. Where was it again? Oh, yeah. Patterson, decent game. Ballard. I'm, I'm over the moon he started. 
I, I was apprehensive whether it was a risk to actually start him with a hamstring. Hamstring's a dodgy one. I hope touch would he gets through it okay. You, decent. Styles, okay. Nail decent game. Job, like I said, he, he did a good defensive header and maybe we should have won a penalty, but I don't think Job created that. Adil had a good game. I think Adil had a good game and he looks knackered at the end. He looks like he wants, he looks like he's injured, to be fair. I hope he's okay. Touch wood, Adil, you're okay. I think Adil had a good game. Um, I say Bar was poor, Hamey was poor, and Mundo wasn't really good, was he? Let's face it. And Neil, Dan Neil did, did well. So there we go. There we go. Anyway, leave me the man of the match down below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know which players are actually you would just get rid of at the end of the season. Cheers for watching. Take care. God bless me. God go with you. Hopefully next time I say yeah, I feel a little bit better. Thank you. Oh, and I feel for all those Sunderland fans that are here there. Oh, nil-nil draw. What a boring nil-nil match. <laughs> anyway, it's better than getting in defeat. It's better than losing. All right, see you later. Thank you.